。香港咧就好多人嘅，有好多大厦，好多高楼大厦。Hello, welcome back to Long Nguyễn Channel. Chào đón các bạn đang quay trở lại với Long Nguyễn Channel. Các bạn ơi, hôm nay sẽ là một video nữa để chia sẻ với các bạn thêm một trong những cái phương pháp học tiếng Anh của Long. Và Long hy vọng là các bạn sẽ thích cái video này ha. Và nội dung của ngày hôm nay đó chính là làm sao để chúng ta có thể khai thác triệt để một cái chủ đề nào đó khi chúng ta nói tiếng Anh cùng với bạn của mình. Và video ngày hôm nay có một sự tham gia rất đặc biệt của một người bạn cũng rất đặc biệt luôn. Long muốn giới thiệu với các bạn ngay lúc này đây. Tada! Rồi các bạn ơi, ngồi sát bên cạnh Long đây Đó chính là anh chàng Xavier, một người bạn rất đặc biệt Và câu chuyện của Xavier cũng rất đặc biệt Bây giờ chúng ta cùng tìm hiểu nha So, hello Xavier How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm so excited because you are able to join me today for a video And I think that uh, the audience gonna love it a lot Okay, so like I said earlier, it's gonna be a video sharing how to Uh, conduct a conversation in English and how we um, actually explore the topic to the fullest. Okay. Yeah, Savi, your name is quite interesting. How do you spell it? Um, so it's spelled X A V I E R. All right. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think it's gonna be really cool for people to know who you are and. I think it's a good idea as well to talk about your country, right? So, because I believe that everybody is proud of their country, right? So, so am I. All right, so let's talk about uh, your country, right? Where are you from? Um, so, I'm from Hong Kong and I'm also from Ireland. My mom is from Hong Kong and my dad is from Ireland. Um, I speak Cantonese, but I do not speak Irish. You have two nationalities, like Hong Kong and Irish. Oh wow, so interesting. Well, so which country do you refer? Uh, Hong Kong, I think. Hong Kong, Hong Kong yeah, right. Hong Kong, definitely. <laughs> Why do you love Hong Kong that much? Well, I love Hong Kong very much because I grew up there my whole life. I love the food there. I love the people there. I love the city. I love looking everywhere, seeing so many people, so many buildings. Wow. It's very lively. So mm -hmm. I really enjoy the atmosphere there in Hong Kong. Okay, right. Yes. Um, well, how big is the city? Like I heard I heard a lot about Hong Kong, but I actually, honestly, I haven't been to Hong Kong before. So how big is the city of Hong Kong? Uh, the city of Hong Kong is quite big, but not that big. Mm. So it's split into three sections. The first section is the main one, which is Um, Hong Kong City, mm -hmm. which is the main area where all the skyscrapers and all the wow. buildings and all the people who go to work mostly are. Mm -hmm. And then there's the second district called Kowloon. It is also has it also has a lot of skyscrapers, but not as much as Hong Kong City. Mm -hmm. And then there's a final district, which is New Territories, which is also the biggest one. Wow! But there it's mostly parks, um, small buildings. Villas, big houses, and just places to relax. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, can you share with us a little bit more about your life in Hong Kong? Talking about your house, do you have a house or an apartment in Hong Kong? Um, so I moved quite a lot when I was younger, but I did have a house. It was in the New Territories. Wow. It was a big house. Mm -hmm. Um, I loved it a lot. It was very quiet, but very unlike Hong Kong City, which is so bustling and so many people there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Can you share a little bit more about your neighborhood? Is it a very friendly neighborhood? Um, yes, it is a really friendly neighborhood. The people in Hong Kong mostly are very nice. Mm -hmm. um, great personalities. They will always help you if you uh, find them. And yeah, I mean, my neighborhood was very nice. Okay, cool. Well, uh, earlier you did share a little bit about food, like Hong Kong food, right? So, um, what is your favorite Hong Kong food? I think my favorite food is the egg tarts, which is called dan tat mm -hmm. in Cantonese. Right. It, um, it's for everyone in Hong Kong. It's one of the most special things you can have there. It's really delicious. It's yeah. just egg and a tart around it. Mm -hmm. But what makes it so special is its tradition. It comes from a very long time ago. It originated a while ago, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's just so delicious. Yeah, okay, so I can't wait to visit Hong Kong. So I'm just wondering whether. You can be my local guy when I ever make it happen. I mean, traveling to Hong Kong. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Can't wait for that. <laughs> Apart from Hong Kong, have you been a lot to uh, other Asian countries? Yes, I have been to quite a lot of Asian di uh, districts and areas. Um, 
I think in generally in Asia, every um, life is really bustling, full of people, mm-hmm. full, uh, full of interesting foods, colorful foods, colorful places. It's just really nice to be in because life is so fast mm-hmm. and so fun. All right, very cool. Initially, when you introduced yourself, you did say that you can speak the Cantonese a little bit. No, no, no. I think a lot, not not a little bit, right? Okay, so you speak a lot of Cantonese and English, right? Can you somehow, you know, say something in Cantonese? Would there be anything you would like me to say? Okay, okay, let me think. Can you briefly reintroduce Hong Kong in Cantonese? Yeah, something that you're really excited to share about, maybe the country, the people, the food, or whatever, in Cantonese. Of course, later on, I really want you to translate all the things in English. All right, <laughs> okay, let's get started. Okay. 香港是很多人的有很多大廈很多高樓大廈那裡的人都很好生活真的很開心的因為我周圍去搭地鐵搭叮叮周圍去就很好玩的一個城市咯OK It sounds really cool when it comes to Cantonese But again, what does it mean? <laughs> yeah. So basically, in Cantonese, I said that Hong Kong is a really fun city, mm-hmm. full of people, full of high uh, skyscrapers, mm-hmm. and that's like a really nice place to be with, nice people, nice food. Yeah. All right. Very cool. You know what? Like your mom is a Hong Kong person, right? I so I think that she's really proud of you for for loving her culture and her language, and I think you speak very good Cantonese. If I have, for example, if I have only three days for my holiday, very short holiday. So, where you can recommend if I happen to visit Hong Kong? Well, I think for three days, it is definitely very worth it to go visit all three districts um, because they're so different um, in different ways. Mm. Like, in in the big city, it's I think it's better at night because that's when most of the nightlife is. Mm-hmm. It's where the food is so amazing. It's where the lights in the city are so beautiful. Mm. Um, Kowloon um, Mid District. It's really nice to go shopping, um, looking at the views mm-hmm. at the city, which is really nice. Yes. And the new territories. If you want to go out in the parks or ride a bike or enjoy yourself at a calm and leisurely time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, like, what I have known about Hong Kong is just very little until I actually talked to you and you did, you know, give a lot more inside experience about Hong Kong, right? It's, it's really cool. So I am really looking forward to traveling to Hong Kong and having you as my local guy. Okay, cool. Like Xavier and his mom have been living in Vietnam for four months, right? And Savi actually learning Vietnamese right now. It's going to be a very cool idea to actually ask him about his Vietnamese language experience. All right, okay. All right, so uh, when did you start learning Vietnamese? Well, I only started about two months ago, two and a half months ago. I started because I felt like Vietnamese culture was really interesting Mm -hmm. and that it was really hard to communicate with people here. Like if you want to buy something or if you want, if you just want to talk to people here, Mm -hmm. you have to learn the language because it's much easier to talk to other people and for them to open up to you. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So um, how do you learn Vietnamese? Like you take a course? Or you learn from someone or you like kind of self-study? Um, I do all of the above, but I mostly take a course where I just, so far I've just been learning some um, basic vocabulary, mm-hmm. things that you can use on the streets easily, like thank you, which is cảm ơn, and, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, like things like that, which I really, uh, I think will be very useful for my time in Vietnam mm. when I stay here. Yeah. Wow, it's really cool. What do you think are the most difficult tasks when it comes to learning a new language, like Vietnamese for example? I think for Vietnamese and lots of Asian languages, it's really hard because of the tones. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of tones that determine what you're saying. That's right. So you could be saying something completely different if you mess up the sound. Exactly. Yeah, (laughs) that's the hardest part, I think. All right. Okay, so of course, as a Vietnamese myself, 
when hearing a person like a foreigner like you trying to speak Vietnamese, try to learn Vietnamese, I am very proud and excited as well. So, um, can you say something in Vietnamese? Uh, so far, I'm just learning basics like Chào buổi sáng. I think it means good morning. Okay. <laughs> I think yeah, that should be what it means. Mm-hmm. Uh, still trying to learn them so far. Okay. Yeah. Let me just sing a word. It's easier for you to to say, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, for those who are watching, like I said earlier, the majority of people who watch my channel are those uh, English learner, and they really want to uh, get better improve their English proficiency. So, do you have any advice for them uh, in terms of uh, improving their English? How how do they do to actually improve their English? I think it's not just about learning the words, but it's learning things that like apply in daily life, mm-hmm, and that, not yeah. just words, but like speaking it out in mm-hmm. one sentence. Because word by word, it's very hard. But if you say it in one sentence, it would be easier to that's say. Right. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what I think would be best if you're okay. learning it right now. You know, I could not agree more with you on that point because you know, I think the like, the ultimate purpose of learning a language is to be able to use it right to communicate. So as long as we know how to apply what we have learned so far into real life situations, that's the best way to catch up with the language. Yeah. You agree, right? Yeah. Okay. I think that living in Asia is actually like, obviously different from living in a country in the West, maybe. Yeah. yeah, maybe European countries, for example. So, what is the the most obvious difference that you can tell about living in Asia and living in a European country? Well, I think one of the biggest difference is the pace of life. So, how fast things go, mm-hmm. um, and the way people see things in different areas. So, like in the, in the West, people would be very slow. Mm-hmm. Like life doesn't. You don't really go anywhere. You only go out once a week. Just enjoy your time at home. Right. But here, you go out every day, um, exploring new places mm-hmm. and eating new things, which is really great here, which I enjoy much more mm-hmm. because you can learn so much more here in Asia. In Asia, right? Yeah. Also, in terms of like family pattern, right? It's quite different as well, right? Yeah. The way that we behave to to older generations and how we behave with our siblings, something like that. What do you think about family pattern in an Asian family. So, being living in Asia my whole life, I feel like it's really common that, of course, most important thing is to respect uh, older people, mm-hmm. like um, my parents, my grandparents, and to give them respect for everything mm-hmm. they've done in their lives. Mm-hmm. But I think the West, it's more like uh, people there all feel like they're the same. So there's not that much, that kind of um, like that tree of mm-hmm. from youngest to oldest, but like. It's all kind of mixed up in a blur, mm. but here it's very obvious to see that children or younger people should care for their parents or their grandparents much more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and you like that. Yeah, you it's do, much. Right? Yeah, it is. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now uh, a little bit challenging for you, right? If you can only pick one adjective to describe Hong Kong, your country, so what should it be? Um. One word. Yeah, one adjective. Okay. I think it would be colorful. Colorful. In I've, what way? I think it's colorful both in everything it does. Like when you look at Hong Kong from a harbor or from a, uh, a close place, you can just see how colorful the lights are he- here. You can see the food, the color of the food. Mm-hmm. But you can also see like people's personalities. Everyone's so like colorful. Everyone's mm-hmm. like. Happy, everyone's moving around. Everyone just seems so vibrant. Mm-hmm. So that's what I love about Hong Kong the mm-hmm. most. And, well, yeah. it, it's not like a mosaic. Yeah. Yeah, with different color, different pieces, yeah, it right? It is. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much, Xavier, for spending your time and sharing a lot about your countries, about your favorite things. And I think that the audience gonna love it a lot. Do you want to say something to the people watching this video? Okay, why not? Uh, well. I am very excited to be on this channel and I'm very excited to help you and to be helped and see your reactions to what you felt about this video. Alright, okay. Okay, so guys, if you have any questions regarding Hong Kong, regarding uh, Sabia, you can comment, maybe based on your, uh, you know, like comments, we can come up with some interesting videos, right? Thank you again for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye! <laughs>
Các bạn ơi như vậy là các bạn vừa theo dõi xong phần nói chuyện của Long với cậu bé Xavier 13 tuổi đến từ Hồng Kông Đây là một cậu bé nhỏ tuổi thôi nhưng mà cái tư duy và cách nói chuyện của bạn giống như một người lớn phải không các bạn Và giống như Long nói ngay lúc đầu với các bạn khi chúng ta thực hiện một cái cuộc nói chuyện trong tiếng Anh Nói về một chủ đề nào đó thì chúng ta hãy cố gắng tìm rất là nhiều cách khác nhau và những câu hỏi khác nhau để có thể đi sâu vào chủ đề Có như vậy thì các bạn có thể là tận dụng được hết cái vốn kiến thức ngoại ngữ của mình Để tránh trường hợp là chúng ta có những chủ đề rất hay nhưng chúng ta lại không biết khai thác Để làm cho nó rất là uổng phí khoảng thời gian chúng ta nói chuyện ha Long hy vọng rằng các bạn có thể vận dụng được những gì Long vừa chia sẻ vào trong cái thực tiễn nói tiếng Anh của mình ha Có thể là đi câu lạc bộ tiếng Anh hoặc tham gia vào một sự kiện nào đó bằng tiếng Anh Thì chúng ta sẽ có cách khai thác cái chủ đề nói chuyện với nhau ha Rất cảm ơn các bạn đã theo dõi video ngày hôm nay Và nếu bạn thực sự thích video này hãy tiếp tục ủng hộ Long bằng cách like, share, đăng ký kênh Và đừng quên nhấn chuông để có thể nhận được những video mới nhất của Long vào mỗi tuần các bạn nha Cảm ơn rất nhiều và hẹn gặp lại